Hi everybody and uh, welcome to another one of my record updates. It's been a while, I've been very very busy recently to be honest, um, but I have found time to buy a bit of vinyl. I've been uh, selling a few things, trimming down the collection a bit so I can acquire some new stuff. Uh, it's freezing out tonight, so zero degrees on the weather station tonight and uh, and uh, expecting a little bit of snow later on tonight so it'll be the first fall of the winter there. Not even winter quite yet anyway. Anyway, here we go. Enough of me talking rambling about the weather. Typical British thing to do. Uh, first up is my copy of Surfing Bird. Uh, I just received this the other day on Wednesday it arrived and I managed to purchase. I don't mind how much I, I spent just £10 on this album and uh, as far as I'm aware I think it is a 64 reissue of, of the album. Uh, maybe one of you guys, uh, Ron or someone, could maybe uh, clear that up for me. But there's the front cover there and I know the, the track listing changes on some of the issues there. You can see that. And then there's the back and it's on the, the Garrett label. So if I show you this now. There it is, and there's the back. <laughs> Quite a lot of spindle wear on there. Um, I do have a reissue this album, but to see this for just so cheap, I just wanted to snap it up and uh, take the risk. But it sounds fantastic. One or two scratches on it, but it's a superb album. It's the iconic surfing bill that Bird opens the album. Uh, great uh, cover of uh, Mys Relu on it. Mys Relu, the Dick Dale number, that's on Pulp Fiction. It's nearly as good as the Dick Dale version. A lot of them are disappointing when you hear them, but uh, yeah, the Trashmen really nailed that one. But it's uh, fantastic all the way through, and uh, a lovely front cover there. A real iconic album. So if anyone could tell me if that is a 64 issue, I would be grateful some of the uh, American guys out there who watch this channel. Uh, next up, I've got a copy of uh, the Fever Tree album. I've really been enjoying this album. Um, there's a band that I've seen shown on the VC quite often, but I've never actually heard them before. So I bought the album, and uh, it's really nice. This is on the uh, the Capitol label there. Uh, I really like the, uh, the, the the cover, the Buffalo Springfield cover. Nowadays, clowns who can't can't uh, even sing, really good. But that's a lovely album to listen to. That one, I'll listen to it a lot more. Great front cover again on that one. Next up is something which I kind of got drawn towards by uh, people recommending the Gandalf album, and. Uh, I went for a copy of Tim Harden's first album. The game actually picked this up very, very cheaply. Um, it was under ten pounds to buy. I mean, I don't usually talk about the cost of records, but you know, when it's a real bargain, <laughs> we like to say, don't we? Uh, but there we go. It's a lovely album, an underrated album, I think, in my in my view. Um, you know, it's got um, you know, reason to believe it's probably one of my favourite ones on it. And hang, hang on to a dream, which uh, is covered on that Gandalf album. But this is an album on uh, the Verve label, Verve Forecast. It's in lovely condition. Obviously, you know, very sad end to Tim, Han to, uh, Tim Harding's life, but, you know, an iconic singer, you know, it's a mono version of this, and it's an, an album we'll listen to a lot more. I did have, like, a CD, uh, Verve CD of, of a, lot, a compilation of this stuff, but this one I've been playing quite a lot, so Tim Harding, really enjoying that. Next up is what you might be able to hear playing in the background. I'd never heard this album before, and this is Gene Clark's album, uh, which is uh, Two Sides to Every Story. Um, I'd seen this around before, but I managed again to pick it up cheap. I'm on a lucky run at the moment, and uh, this is in absolutely fantastic condition. Uh, quite, a, you know, obviously this was released uh, a couple of years after the No Other album, which is you know the iconic album that Gene Clark released, along with uh, uh, White Light that album. But this one is really, you know, it's okay. First side's a little bit disappointing, but the magic really kicks in for me in the final three songs. You've got Hear the Wind, Past the Dresses, and Silent Crusade. It's where Gene's genius really kicks in. It just suddenly clicks into place, and suddenly you've got some iconic Gene Clark tracks. But if you've not heard this album before, and I am starting to explore some of his later career, then I think this is a, a lovely place to start with his later stuff, but it's completely different from no other. Although you can hear some elements of it in those final three tracks. So yeah, lovely album on the RCA label, uh, RCE. Yeah, sorry, RCO label, and it's the one with the uh, the red cow. <laughs> it's that label there. Uh, next up, a couple of ones which I do champion every now and then. This is the first Dexys album, iconic British album. You know, always associated with sort of like the two two tone sound and stuff like that. But obviously, they were they were pretty much out on their own. They're a sort of white soul. Um, great cover of uh, Seven Days Too Long on this as well. This is a reissue from '84, I think, on the Fame label. Um, but yeah, it's a great. If you've never heard this album, it's, you know, if, you've, if all you've ever heard is um, "Come On Eileen," then you really need to get this album and start to discover the the, the, the true amazing band that Dexys are. But that's really good. You know, first time I've owned it on vinyl, I've only ever had it on CD. And this has arrived, um, which I'm really pleased to get. And this is a copy of their most recent album. 
which is a covers album. It's patchy in places, you know, but it is what it is. It's different from their absolutely amazing album. You know, one day I'm going to saw that one. It's different to that. But there's a lovely uh, instrumental which opens it, Woman of Ireland. Uh, the, the Colour of Kildare is fantastic. Uh, Grazing in the Grass. It's a fun album. It's an album they were meant to make after their uh, Two Rye album. And uh, I managed to get this one as a signed copy by Kevin Rowland as well. But uh, only Kevin Rowland could get away with uh, trousers like that. Superb band. Band to really explore, I think. Next up, I've got uh, uh, Ravi Shankar's, I think it's his son actually, uh, Ananda Shankar. And uh, this album was released, I think, about 1970. And uh, this is a lot of fun, this album. It's kind of like psych meets uh, Eastern sort of mysticism and, and, and sitar and so on. But uh, so you've got covers like uh, Jumping Jack Flash is on this. Um, but it's a really good album. It's lots of fun. It's quite funky in places as well. But I uh, really enjoy it. This is Reissue. Uh, it's on a reprise label. Uh, but it's well worth getting hold of that. If you see this, you have an enjoyable half an hour listening to that one. Um, next up, while we're kind of on sort of like that funky sort of feel, I've got a Bobby Womack album here. Um, it's not in great shape, you can see it just needs sticking down there. But again, it's a really, really good album, nice metallic sort of sleeve to it. And then on the back there, there's the man himself that makes us all feel slightly inferior. No one could sing like Bobby Womack. Um, a couple of a Beatles cover on here, you've got um, uh, And I Love Her. Uh, you've got the cover of Sweet Caroline, which is actually really good. But yeah, lovely album and well worth getting hold of if you can. It's called Understanding. It's got a few Bobby Womack albums. Uh, need to do a soul funk sort of show in at some point. Next up is a comp which I've had for a while, but I've been playing a lot recently. And this is a David Axelrod comp. Now some of you probably recognise the name from uh, his work, his work with later versions of the Electric Prunes, um, and uh, you know, uh, Holy Are You was the one that he did with them. But this is a great compilation of, of a wide range of his tracks. Um, got another one somewhere, I think. Oh, yeah, that one there. They've got Heavy Axe as well, which I've had a while. Uh, one of, I think it's about 74, that one. But this is a lovely compilation if you can get a hold of it. Um, quite a few General Confessional by the Prunes on there. I think they were the Prunes only in name by that point, I think. I'm sure one of you could tell one or two stories and fill me in on that one. But yeah, it's a lovely album to get. Uh, pretty much instrumental, so a couple of vocals on it. Um, Earth Rots on there, which is a great one. I'd like to get that album one day. Next up, I'm not sure if I've shown this one before or not, but it's been kicking around in the collection for a while. Got it in the summer, and it's Leonard Cohen's album. Uh, I think this is his first one, isn't it, with Suzanne on it? But it's a really lovely album to listen to. Uh, big fan of Leonard Cohen. I've got most of his albums. My favourite album of all those is Live Recording, the uh, Live in Dub, Live at the O2. Uh, which is a really, really lovely live recording from sort of the latter years of his life until he sadly passed away last year. But you know, this is one of his iconic early albums, and you know, he's got to be a certain mood for it. But if you've never listened to that Live in London one from, recorded from the O2, you really should get hold of it because it's a very life affirming album, and uh, the warmth from the crowd and from Cohen is, is something to behold. Uh, really, really good. Next up is a couple of recent purchases from a record shop in Hay on Wye. Um, and we've got a uh, Mama Tried, the Merle Haggard album here. Uh, it's really nice to get hold of a copy of this. I wanted it for a while. Uh, really nice album there, and I've uh, really been enjoying it. And of course, the iconic uh, title track, uh, Mama Tried. I like his version of Folsom Prison Blues as well. It's pretty good. But yeah, Merle Haggard. I've been enjoying that one. Uh, next up, uh, found this in a charity shop. This is uh, Marty Robbins, Gun, <laughs> Gun, Gunfighter Ballads. It's a, a classic uh, album by him. Uh, with Big Iron on it, Cool Water, and of course El Paso's on it as well. And it's a lot of fun, this album, and it's actually well worth a listen. Now, this one is on the uh, orange uh, label there, CBS label there, which you see a lot in the UK. And it's a really nice album, well worth listening to that one. Uh, next one, this one's been kicking around for a bit as well, which I just wanted to show it. Um, and this is uh, made, I think, during the, uh, around the time of the moon landing, to Countdown Time in Outer Space, the Dave Brubeck Quartet. His son played uh, a Near Where I Live uh, recently as well. But uh, yeah, this is a lovely album to listen to. Obviously, a lot of people, a lot of jazz uh, fans, you know, they, they, they turn their nose up a bit about the Brubeck Quartet and never really understood why. Maybe because Take Five was such a popular uh, track when it was cut. But yeah, this is a lovely album to listen to as well. I've really been enjoying that. And this was from a record shop, Record Corner, 39 New Rents, Ashford. I think that's in Kent, isn't it? So back in the day, that's where this one came from. It's in lovely condition though, and uh, you know, because it's a white cover from uh, you know 50 years ago nearly now. Um, good nick. Next up is something which I really just took a bit of a risk on, and um, 
I'm still getting my head around it really it's this David uh, Ackles song uh, album and it's called American Gothic and there he is in the boat at the bottom there and uh, yeah this is um, a very ambitious album at the time and whenever you read reviews of it now they're always saying this is like a lost classic waiting to be discovered whether it's a lost classic or not I'm not so sure um, it's taking a lot to get my head around it's quite orchestral in places it reminds me a little bit of Jack Brel, uh, Jacques Brel in places as well um, but yeah it's good it, it, as well worth listening to but I've got to give it a lot more plays I think before I uh, decide whether I'm going to keep this one or not it's not in the best of conditions it's got a bit of a cut out there and sleeve uh, spine wear as well but yeah I'm going to give it another go there he is on the back there okay um, only three more to go now I've rattled through these really quickly actually I might pick out a couple more um, this is a band that I went to see a couple of weeks ago in Bristol and this is the Sadies, the Canadian band that I've been going for a good old 20 years now. I've got all of their albums um, but I'd never seen them live and it was really was a fantastic evening down in Bristol. Uh, it's the last night of their European tour, I think they'd been through Japan and Australia and then they came and played a small venue in Bristol called The Tunnels and it's, this is their most recent album, Northern Passages. I, it's, you know, all of their albums are fantastic in my view. It's right up my street. You know, it's a bit sort of psych, a bit sort of country rock, and some killer instrumentals, some very surfy sort of instrumentals as well. It's a lovely, uh, lovely uh, gatefold sleeve, and I just couldn't resist buying it, even though I already had it on CD. I just had to get hold of the vinyl. Really hard to get Sadie's vinyl in the UK, though. Um, I want to get Internal Sounds and um, Darker Circles as well, and anything beyond that you can't get your hands on at all over here. It's just impossible. But yeah, what a great band, and they played a, a, ten, a ten song encore just because uh, someone in the in the small audience uh, asked for it, and they're just just a great band who just looked like they really enjoyed playing. Uh, two more to go uh, to finish tonight. Actually, we'll go for free. I'll put this one in the pile as well. Another one I just picked up recently. Um, this one, I'm not, I don't think I've shown this one before, but I've had it a while. And um, there's a great uh, article in the new Shindig magazine. It's got uh, Ronnie Lane on the front cover. Uh, it's a really good article on Ronnie Lane's career after the small faces but there's a really good article also on Lee Hazelwood and this album I picked up a, a, a long time ago now from a, a charity shop where I grew up and uh, this is 40 it's an album made, I think mainly of covers actually um, but it's a really underrated album and uh, an album which doesn't really get talked about at all uh, it's quite hard to get hold of now and this one is on the uh, Lee Hayward Industries label Whoop. there you go the Lee Hazelwood Industries label there but yeah it's a really cracking album uh, songs that I really like on this uh, obviously it was it was a very good year the classic one which Sinatra sang um, I really like the bed uh, and also uh, September songs really good as well um, while we're on on Lee let's have a little bit of Nancy I've been playing this a lot recently uh, Nancy Sinatra's greatest hits uh, really enjoying it and the song that really jumps at me I mean obviously everybody loves some velvet morning and uh, you know Jackson and stuff like that but I really like Lightning Girl, um, with that massive fuzz guitar in it. It's really good, very stompy. My young, uh, my young uh, six-year-old lad stomps around the landing on the landing to that one when I put it on. It's a real good one to listen to there. And the final one, um, which I've also recently just got hold of as well, I went to shop in Hay when I was selling records. There's a big batch of Johnny Cash LPs in there, and uh, was, you know I sort of had a look at it. Songs of Our Soil was in there, and a few others from sort of around that era. But I managed to get my hands on uh, on this one. And it's, I uh, can't get it out of the wrap of the, out of the cover, there's uh, Johnny Cash's Bit of Tears, his sort of homage to the Native American Indian. Um, and uh, it's a really, really nice album this is. And what a great picture of Johnny Cash on the front there. Um, as long as the grass shall grow and uh, drunk, uh, the Ballad of Ira Hayes is on it as well. Um, all of the, you know, it's a classic album and uh, one of my favourite Johnny Cash albums actually. So there we go. Uh, there's uh, all my records for, for this for this uh, this month or, or a few weeks. Uh, and uh, if anyone could have, check out that uh, Trashman LP for me and see if it is a 64 issue, I think it is. They released a lot of uh, versions of it in 64, um, but it'd be great if you could do that. And hey, wouldn't it be great if it was, because it'd be lovely just to have a bargain on eBay for a change. Anyway, take care of yourself and uh, uh, I'll, I'll check out more of your videos. I've really enjoyed watching Dan's uh, live video a couple of weeks ago. I managed to chip in and watch a bit of that. Um, on a Sunday night, very enjoyable. You, you need a you need to get a radio show, I reckon. I'll, I'll be tuning in for that. Anyway, uh, take care of yourselves, everybody, and I'll, I'll see you again soon. Cheers, bye.